let's discuss the concept of God in Judaism. It's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number six, verse number four. Moses, peace be upon him, said, Shema Israelo Adnan Hainu Adnai Khad. It's a Hebrew quotation which means, Yoro Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, verse number 11. I am Lord and there's none else. There is no savior besides me. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 45, verse number 5. I am God and there's none else. There's no God besides me. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 46, verse number 9. I am God and there's none like me. It's mentioned in the book of Exodus, chapter number 20, verse number 3 to 5, and the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 9. It says, Almighty God says in the Old Testament, Thou shalt have no other God besides me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of anything, of any likeness, in the heaven above, in the earth beneath, and the water beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, thy God, thy Lord, is a jealous God. So if you read the Old Testament, you shall understand the concept of God in Judaism, which believes in only one God who deserves to be worshipped, and he has got no images. Before we discuss the concept of God in Christianity, let me make a few points clear. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslim and the Christians, we are going together. But one may ask, then where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is there are many Christians who say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. He said that he was almighty God. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. I would like to repeat. In the complete Bible, if you read, there is not a single unambiguous statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devils with the Spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I, with the finger of God, cast out devils. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just for I seek not my will but the will of my father anyone who says I seek not my will but the will of Almighty God he's a Muslim Jesus Christ peace be upon another Muslim it's mentioned in the book of Acts chapter number 2 verse number 22 e men of Israel listen to this Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles which God did by him and you are witness to it a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. And when Jesus Christ was asked that which is the first of the commandment, he repeated verbatim what was said by Moses, peace be upon him. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29, and he said, Shema Israelo, Adnel Hainu Adnai Khad. Yero Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. So if you read the Christian scriptures, the Bible, it too speaks about oneness of God who only deserves to be worshipped. Let's discuss the concept of God in Islam. The best reply that any Muslim can give you regarding the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Kul hu Allah ahad. Say he's Allah one and only. Allah samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not 
noise begotten. There is nothing like him. This is a four line definition. If any person says that so and so candidate is God, and if that candidate fits in the four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. The first is Kul Hu Allah Ahad. Second, Allah Samad. Say is Allah one and only, the absolute, the eternal. Lam yulid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. Walam yakul lahukufwan ad. There's nothing like him. This surah class is the touchstone of theology. Whichever God you're worshipping, put him to the test of surah class. If that candidate passes the test, we have no objection in accepting that candidate as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Almighty God. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 110, Qulidullah Abidur Rahman, Ayam Atadu, Falal Asma al Husna. Say, call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful name. This concept of believing in one sole creator and sustainer of the whole universe, the whole of mankind, is the only uniting factor for the whole of humankind. It is the only solution. For the global unity islam does not only speak about unity it practically demonstrates unity every day in our life every muslim should practically demonstrate unity at least five times a day during our salah when we muslims offer salah we stand shoulder to shoulder irrespective where the person standing next to you whether it's black or white yellow or brown rich or poor king or pauper when you stand for salah you have to stand shoulder to shoulder We Muslims practically demonstrate global unity at least once a year during the Hajj. In Hajj, about two and a half million people gather from different parts of the world, from USA, from UK, from Canada, from Singapore, from Malaysia, from India, from Pakistan, from the Arab countries. And the men, they are dressed up in two pieces of unsown white cloth. You cannot identify whether the person standing next to you is a king or a pauper. It is the best example of annual global unity. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, No Arab is superior to a non Arab. Neither is a non Arab superior to an Arab. No white man is superior to a black man. Neither is a black man superior to a white man, except by virtue, except by taqwa, except by God consciousness, except by piety. So the only solution for the global unity is believing and worshipping only one sole creator and sustainer. Now we proceed to the second part of the talk, that is global peace. Islam is the only solution for global peace. Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the Arabic word silm, which means to submit your will to Almighty God. In short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any person who submits his will to Almighty God is called as a Muslim. Muslim by definition means a person who has acquired peace by submitting his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Almighty God. And this word Islam is mentioned in the Quran no less than eight times. And the word Salam, a Muslim, is mentioned in the Quran no less than 45 times. That's the reason the greetings of the Muslim is Assalamu Alaikum. May peace be on you. And this was the greetings of all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If you read the Bible, when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, goes to the upper room in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 36, he says, Shalom Alaikum in Hebrew. In Arabic, Assalamu Alaikum. In English, may peace be on you. This is the best global salutation of peace. Assalamu Alaikum. May peace be on you. Unfortunately, today the Western world, the majority of which adheres to the faith 
of Christianity, they use a different form of greeting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hi, hello. Why don't they use the greetings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. May peace be on all of you. Islam is the religion of peace. But unfortunately, today we find in the international media, there is virulent propaganda about Islam. The international media, it is bombarding misinformation about Islam to the world. And according to an article which came in the Time magazine on the 16th of April, 1979, it says that there were more than 60,000 books written against Islam and against the Prophet in a span of 150 years from 1800 to 1950. If you calculate more than one book was written against Islam every day. But after 9-11, after 11 September 2001, this has reached epidemic levels. Now, the percentage the number has increased to epidemic levels. It is the duty of every Muslim that he tries and clarifies these misconceptions that are spread by the media. And the media adopts certain strategies. It's portraying as though Islam is a religion which causes unrest, which is the cause of the disruption of peace in the world. The strategies they use is one of them that they say such things belong to Islam which are alien to Islam. It is unheard of in Islam. For example, they say that Islam is an outdated religion. It's a religion which does not believe in reason, logic and science. In fact, Islam is the most up-to-date religion. It believes in reason, logic and science. And you can refer to my video cassette, Quran and modern science, conflict or conciliation. The other strategy used by the media is they quote many verses of the Quran and the Hadith out of context. I'll give you one example. The media says, the Quran mentions in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5, that wherever you find a kafir, into bracket non-Muslim, you kill him. And if you open the Quran, you will find this verse. It does say, wherever you find a kafir, kill him. But they're quoting this verse out of context. The context is, it is a verse which was revealed in the battlefield. And Allah says that when the enemies come to fight you, don't get scared, have courage and kill them. It's in the battlefield. They're quoting out of context. Any army general today to boost up the morale of his soldiers, he will but naturally say that when you find the enemy, don't get scared, kill him. He will not say that just sit quiet. And Many a times after quoting Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse number 5, they jump to verse number 7. Why? Because verse number 6 has the reply. Verse number 6 says that if the enemy wants peace, don't just give it to him, escort him to a place of security. Imagine, the most merciful army general today, the maximum he will say is let the enemy go. But the Quran says don't just let him go, escort him to a place of security so that you may hear the word of Almighty God. There are various such examples. Surah Anfal chapter number 8 verse number 60 where it talks about killing the enemy. But immediately next verse, most of the time in the Quran when it speaks about killing the enemy, immediately the next verse speaks about peace. It says in Surah Anfal chapter number 8 verse number 61 that peace is better. If the enemy wants peace, give it to them. This is what the Quran says. So Quran and Islam is for peace. They quote verses out of context. The third strategy used is that they pick up black sheep of the community and they portray as though they're exemplary Muslim. I would like to ask a question. Suppose you want to judge how good is the latest Mercedes car, 500 SEL. And if a person who does not know how to drive the car sits behind the steering wheel and he bangs up the car, who will you blame? Will you blame the car or will you blame the driver? Who will you blame, the car or the driver? But naturally the driver. If you want to know how good the car is, you look at the specification. What is its speed? What is the safety measure? What is the pickup? How many gears it has got, etc. And if you really want to test drive the car, 
put behind the steering wheel an expert driver. If you want to judge Islam, look at the exemplary Muslim, which is the last and final prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him.